let's begin by simply using SQL Server Management Studio to look at the database that we're going to back up and migrate to Azure. So there is a database here on my laptop called AW. And in order for this to work, it has to be in what's called full recovery mode. So right click on it, go to properties, then go to options and check the recovery model. It needs to be full and not one of these other options. That means that SQL Server is going to reserve uh, backups of all the data, the transaction log. Uh, it'll make sure that nothing happens to all the data that's being uh, applied to this database. All the changes are tracked in a log and that it'll keep those all in the right order and it won't overwrite that log until you have taken a proper backup of it. So we're all set with a recovery model here. And then the following script, you would typically have a SQL agent job, of course, running to do this automatically, but we're just gonna do it manually. So we're gonna go into the database here and then we're gonna do a backup. And then we're just gonna simulate like typically in a production system, you'd have updates, you'd have a, a backup to your transaction log, then some more updates, then maybe five minutes later, 10 minutes later, you would have another backup, but let's just go ahead and execute those. Now, what has happened? If we look in our location, you can see we now have a full backup and two log backups. So that's kind of what the condition we want our source database to be in before we start the migration to Azure. So next step is to open Azure uh, Data Studio and start the migration. Okay, we are now going to migrate a SQL Server from an on-premises source or a local source on your laptop to Azure. So we're in Azure Data Studio. The first thing you wanna do is set up the connection over here on the left and say new connection. And I'm just going to a local SQL Server on my computer here. So I'll just say dot for the default one, but you can type in the string of the server and type in either Windows or SQL Server authentication, click connect. And then look over on the left here, you should see a green dot next to your server, expand the databases, and then right click on the database that you wanna migrate. So right click, say manage, and then you'll see this Azure SQL migration if you've installed the extension that we talked about earlier, the Azure SQL migrate. So click this, and then you're gonna be presented with this screen. It's gonna show you any kind of migrations that, have, uh, that are in progress or already happened. So click Migrate to Azure SQL because we want to migrate the AW database. And now we're going to walk through seven different steps to set this up. So this is where you're going to link to your Azure account, your Azure portal account, and click Next. Now we're going to give a password of my local uh, credentials to get to the SQL Server here. And then click Next. Now this is where it's doing the assessment. Um, so the old database migration uh, advisor assistant, that one did the assessment. Well, this has just done that same assessment and it's actually much more um, uh, performant than it used to be. It does that pretty quickly. So we're gonna pick our, uh, our target here where we're gonna migrate to. We're not gonna migrate to a managed instance right now. We're gonna do an Azure virtual machine. Then you can see it says three out of three databases can be migrated, but none of them have been selected. So click this. This is where you collect, click the ones that you want to migrate. So we're just gonna migrate the AW1. Now, if there were any issues, it would show up right here. If there was any compatibility issues from your on-premises with this SQL uh, one in Azure, it would tell you, but we're going to a SQL server on a VM, so there typically is no issues found. Uh, you may see one or two issues uh, if you're going to Azure SQL Managed Instance, maybe if you're using the file stream data type, but that would show up right here. But we're all good to go, so click OK. All right, now click your subscription because you want to, this is your Azure subscription. You may have access to more sub, uh, subscriptions, so you would pick that here. And then the location of where you're migrating to. We, uh, the location of where my SQL Server on a VM is East US2. Now my resource group is called Azure Migrate SQL. So I picked that and then it found that SQL on a virtual machine that we set up in an earlier video. It found that here. So I'm all set. I've picked my source database or databases I want to migrate from. I've picked the subscription I'm migrating to, the location or region. 
the resource group, and the actual virtual machine. Now, this next screen probably has the most, uh, oh no, no, yeah, here we go, online versus offline. Uh, offline is not available at the time of this recording, but online is, and the online is the most uh, flexible. So what the online is gonna do is it's gonna uh, copy a backup file of your uh, full backup of your database, and then it's gonna copy all the transaction log backups of your database that are being taken. So it can migrate the database as you're still using the database. And then when you wanna cut over, there's just a very short downtime. So offline is not available right now. It says feature coming soon, but we're gonna do online. Let's click next. Now this is where you're gonna be asked a lot of different questions. Um, so we're going to fill in the values. In an earlier video, we talked about how to set up a backup share. This is your network share. Now this is where your full database backup file is, and then all the transaction log backups. So I'm going to fill these in. Okay, so that's the name of our network share. This is, of course, the domain username that has access to that same location, and then the password, so I'll fill those in. Okay, we filled those in, and now it's going to uh, prompt you for the storage account. Remember the storage account that we set up in Azure? Uh, it's going to copy the files, the backup files, from this network share to the storage account. So let's pick our resource group, which was Azure Migrate SQL. Then it's going to find this storage account. That's the only one I have there, so it finds it no problem. So we're all set there, and the final one is just, what do you want the database to be called in Azure when it gets copied up to that Azure SQL uh, server on a virtual machine? And we're just gonna leave it as AW, and then we just click Next. Okay, this screen will take a little bit the first time that you do this, because you do not have a database migration service set up. What a DMS is, is behind the scenes, it's orchestrating the copying of the files from your on-premises SQL source up into Azure into the storage account and then applying them to that database in Azure. So let's go ahead and create a new one. Uh, I'm gonna pick the same resource group that I did. I'll just call it Kirby's DMS. Uh, I think I've installed a few of these, so let's just call it one too. Click Create. And then it's going to tell you that you need to set up what's called a self-hosted integration runtime. Now, this is just an agent that runs locally, either in your data center or on your laptop, to be able to get to those files. So go ahead and copy this key first. We're going to need that in a minute. And then download and install the integration runtime. It's going to bring you out to this website where you're going to click to download. Pick the latest version. Click Next. Then I'll just pause the video as the file downloads. Okay, the download is complete. The file has been scanned. Let's go ahead and open it. Just give it a minute to run. Click Next, accept it, and then as soon as you say install, go ahead and wait just a minute because it's going to pop up a dialog box to make sure that you're giving it permission. Here we go permission to install and then let it do its installation. I'm just going to pause the video here while it takes these next couple steps. Okay, then you're going to be prompted with this warning. Like if this is your laptop, you might have the power mode to turn off. So it's just giving you a warning that you, you know, this co computer's configured to enter a sleep or hibernate, hibernate mode and then it'll bring up that in the control panel. So you can ignore that since we're just doing this for test purposes. If this was on a server in your data center, then you might want to change those settings if that pops up. But most likely that's not going to pop up on a production server. Okay, then we click Finish. Give it just a minute. Now this is where you're going to uh, paste that key that we had before. This is really uh, important. We're going to register it. This is what makes the connection from the little agent that it's installed on premises and the actual database migration service that's part of this Azure Data Studio. Uh, you can skip the backup files. So just let that register. It's connected to the cloud service. So once again, this is installing the agent locally on your on-premises server or on your laptop for testing purposes, and it's making the connection between that on-premises server or laptop and uh, the database migration service that we're setting up as part of the Azure Data Studio installation.
or, or wizard SQL migration. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so we get the green check mark and we are all good. So let's close that, close out this browser. And at this point, we're just going to click that check connection, click that, and it should see we're all green, so we're good to go. So the step six here, we set up a new database migration service, which included downloading a little agent, copying this key to the agent to make the connection between this database migration service and your on-premises source. So just click done. All right, there's our service. We're all green. And at this point, we're ready to get started. Let's click next. It gives you a summary of what's going on. And then we click done. Okay, let's check the status of our backup. You just click the Azure SQL migration, and then we'll see that we have one database migration in progress. Let's click that, and we click in on the database that we've set up to migrate. And now you can see, remember these three files? We have our full and our two transaction log backups. Well, here they are. Um, the full was uploaded, and then these two transaction log backups have arrived. They haven't been applied yet, but it's giving you a status of, of how the progress is going. Now let's just kind of get everything uh, that this migration service needs to wrap up. Let's say we're done. We do our final update of the database, and then we do one final backup of the transaction log. So we'll just execute that. This is like a tail log backup because you're, you're all done. You shut down your database. You are no longer using this database and you want to complete the uh, migration to Azure. Uh, that's how you would wrap up the final transaction log backup. Now let's go back over the, tra uh, the database migration service and you give this a few minutes and you're gonna see that that final log backup is uploaded. Okay, so I refresh the screen and you can now see that all of the files have been restored. Here's our first one, the full backup, the first log backup, the second log backup, and then finally the final log backup. They've all been restored. So now we can start the cutover. We're presented with this button here to start the cutover because we want to complete the migration to Azure, to the Azure SQL database on the VM. Click the start cutover and that process gets kicked off. Okay, now you can see that everything's been restored and the cutover is complete. We can uh, verify that by clicking done here. And uh, our top one here is succeeded. So the migration status is succeeded. And we just click done, come out of here, and then we can go to our SQL server on the Azure VM. Just to show kind of the, the final uh, um, result here is this was my local SQL Server instance here. And now I've connected to this SQL Server in Azure. And then here is the database that I've restored. So that is the full migration um, from start to finish.